Good evening, Internet. Good evening, friends. We are the players and we are the LARP makers, and this is our night. We have made fairy tales come alive in our forests. We have stalked the streets as vampires and werewolves. We have mastered time travel. We have conquered space. <laughs> Fellow Dreamweavers, welcome to the Nordic LARP book release party in Stockholm. My name is Johanna Koljonen, and I will be your host for this broadcast. This broadcast will also take you to the other release parties, internets and weather and phone lines permitting, uh, in Copenhagen and Oslo, and in another time zone uh, in Helsinki. At my side is Anna Westerling, the producer of the Nordic LARP book. We're going to talk to her a little bit about what that means at the end of the broadcast. The Nordic LARP book is a landmark work about landmark LARPs, ranging from 1994 to 2010. 30 LARPs, 31 authors and 72 photographers have collaborated on this book. They have revisited their memories, they have searched through the archives of their gaming clubs and probably also cardboard boxes in their parents' basements to find proof of the early days. I'm one of these authors myself, and for my ch chapter on Carolus Rex, I actually had to go back and interview the people who made the game, because I was convinced that I remembered this. After all, it was one of the most um, exhilarating experiences of my life. Turns out, I didn't remember it. I didn't remember half. And that's one of the reasons why this book is an um, interesting read, and a treasure trove also for you, who may have participated in some of the games. For me, for us, this... It, this is book um, transforms memories and legends into history. And for people who haven't been part of the community and who don't know about this form of culture at all, it will be an exciting invitation into a completely new world. We're now going to start by calling Helsinki, uh, where the two editors of the book should be waiting by the phone. Please call. Let's see if we can get in touch with Mr. Marcos Montola and Mr. Jakos Teandros. Exciting. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hello? Hello, this is Marcos. Hello, hello, Marcos. Uh, hi, this is the Stockholm release party calling. Hello, we are here in Finland. Uh, we just saw you, but we can't talk in the same hall with the pins because there's too much noise. So we're taking you uh, from another room. What's the atmosphere? Men's toilet. <laughs> You're at the, in the men's toilet. Fantastic. <laughs> what's the at <laughs> what's the atmosphere outside the men's toilet? It's, it's, it's a lot of people, a lot of sparkling wine has been around. It's a good atmosphere, I think. That's fantastic, Marcus. You would start this with telling, saying, uh, saying a few words. Oh yes, oh yes. First, I'd like to, to thank everyone who's been in the project. This has been absolutely wonderful. Uh, this is not like this is not our party. This is the party for everyone who has been making this love and writing for us, uh, for, for for people who have been producing the book, who have been doing the graphic design and so forth. Uh, the, the the reason why we wanted to do this project is that. We go around the world every now and then uh, talking with people about games. Mm. And the first thing when you say it, the, the word LARP is usually uh, people have a bad reaction to that word. And, and since the Nordic LARP is so cool phenomenon, we wanted to make a very solid and good and undeniable case that Nordic LARPs are something else than people believe Nordic LARPs to be. That's fantastic. Well, I believe that this book should absolutely positively establish that this is quite different from, I don't know, probably the kind of hits that you get if you Google LARP or type it in on YouTube. We, we definitely hope so. All uh, right. I'm passing over to Jakob. All right. Jakob Stendros is the other editor of this book. Uh, like Marcos Montola, he is a game researcher. Hello, Jakob. Hi, Jakob. Oh, what does this feel like right now? It feels absolutely incredible. This book has been my dream for years, and, and to be honest, I didn't, didn't think we would see this day. <laughs> it's beautiful as well. It's so heavy. It's very real. It's, it's only two kilos. <laughs> it's only two kilos. So postage will be an issue. Jaku, what was the biggest obstacle on the course for making this book? 
the biggest obstacle was was that that there are two problems when when you want to document LARPs, and these are that that on the one hand they're ephemeral, meaning that that they cease to exist the moment they become they, they become whole, and the yeah. other one is subjectivity, that that. that when you have a game with 100 people, you will have 100 stories. So trying to reflect uh, the experience, the whole game, or, or the, the whole subculture in a way that would be truthful was, was very challenging. How did you decide what to include? Um, we decided to include uh, what we thought would be uh, as, as wide as possible selection of games from this subculture. And in the, in the, in the selection process, we consulted people in the community and, and sort of contacted people uh, who we thought would be experts on their, their sort of parts of, of, of the Nordic countries. And, and then we sort of found out which, uh, uh, what games there are pictures from and who would be able to write about them and then, then sort of put together a final list of games we would like to uh, celebrate. Jako, this game, this book spans about 16 years of games. Uh, over this period of time, probably 100,000, hundreds of thousands, maybe even people in the Nordic countries have considered themselves LARPers. Is this a truthful reflection of that whole scene? Um, yes and no. This is not a truthful re re reflection of LARP in Finland or in Sweden or in Denmark or in Norway, but it is a truthful reflection of one subculture that exists in the Nordic countries, the, the international scene that, that uh, uh, gathers annually at the Knudpunkt uh, Solmokosta event, and, uh, and the one that produces a, a very rich written tradition and, and, and sort of thoughts on role-playing. But before now, there wasn't one document that you could, you could sort of pick up and, and understand what's so cool about these games. Okay, will there be another book? Is this, are you documenting a movement at its end or at its beginning? Uh, we're, <laughs> we're not talking about the sequel today. Today we're <laughs> celebrating <laughs> this, <laughs> this milestone in our, our community. But obviously, one of the reasons why we created this book was to inspire uh, younger LARPers and, and new LARPers to sort of to show them what people have done before, and uh, and to perhaps to learn from our mistakes. It's absolutely beautiful, Jaco. And even me, who's been to quite a lot of these games, I find it full of information that I didn't have. It's wonderful. Thank you so much, Helsinki. Thank you, Stockholm. Bye. All right. We're back. Yes. Anna, do you have any reactions? Yeah, I, I, no, I'm just happy. <laughs> <laughs> a, a bit on the reaction, like, okay, a new book. In some years, I would say. Yeah, so. maybe a sequel, maybe a sequel later. No, but, yeah. But it does feel to me, because, I mean, they had already decided, hadn't yeah. you already decided which LARPs to include? And then Delirium happened earlier this year, yes. and you, you had to decide to include Delirium yes. as well. So yes. clearly there are games. Yes. And even after that, there have been, I don't know, one or two or three games that maybe maybe you would have wanted to put in the book yes. already. So the, you've already started making the list for the future. Huh? Uh, th that's Marcus and Jacko, that's content. But <laughs> I don't know, that me, that I were to Delirium as well, and was Delirious coming home, <laughs> was of course a contributing. And then also 29 LARPs in a book doesn't sound as good as 30 LARPs in a book. That so is one of the very important reasons to include <laughs> it. We're now going to call Norway. Yep. Uh, um, we're going to go back to the, to the early days of this movement or the, this subculture of progressive LARP or avant-garde LARP or Scandinavian-style LARP. That's a bad word. Nordic LARP is what we call it now. Um, to 1994. Now it sounds like we're going to call the past. We're not yes. going to call the past. We're going to call Oslo, uh, where Erland Edson Hansen, I hope, is waiting for our call. Yes. Hello, and where is he? Okay. Hello, Peter. Hello, hello, Ireland. Yeah, hello? it's a big Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> hello, 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 yes. Ireland. Ireland. Ireland, Ireland. Well, hey, <laughs> hello. You are live on the air, Ireland. What is the atmosphere at the Oslo party right now? What is the atmosphere of Oslo party right now? 
Norway for the win. That's Norway. Alan, can you be a darling and move a little further away so we can hear you better? <laughs> can you hear me better now? Yeah, that's better. <laughs> Yeah. Arland, you write about Trennebyar. This was in 1994. And you write, I, I, I would say, um, about emotions and relationships, uh, even in the context, context of this massive fantasy LARP, which wasn't really about those things. How did you, what was your rationale? Uh, I guess with uh, any player at any game uh, approaches uh, themes uh, which is, are, are a part of themselves. Yeah, sorry. And I'm always been uh, into emotional and relation stuff. Mm. I Is it true that you killed a sheep, a actual sheep at this game? Uh, I didn't kill it uh, all alone. You saw I have a lot of uh, friends helping me. Uh, Alan, I'm sorry. We have very we have a really bad reception. I'm sorry. You're going to have to move away from the room so you don't have to shout. Okay. And I don't need to shout. And I'm and just hearing you about. That's good. I, I can be louder if you don't shout. And then can you please clarify, you didn't kill a sheep, but somebody killed a sheep. I killed a sheep. <laughs> you killed a sheep. <laughs> Would you do that today? No. <laughs> uh, but uh, maybe. Uh, if things uh, got uh, that out of hand, that it did back then, uh, Certainly, we might uh, uh, might do it. I think. If it goes that badly, you felt at the time that you were starving. This is maybe a really bad story to tell to people who don't know anything about LARPing at all. They're going to think that it, this always happens. So let's talk about some other aspects uh, of this. Uh, LARP hacking is an important word for you. So is self empowerment. Uh, how does this relate to your article on Trennebyar? It was the first time uh, I ever realized uh, that uh, sometimes players need to take you know, the story in their own hands. Mm. Don't I mean, it was huge. Yeah, don't players always have control of their story in a LARP, though? No, uh, certainly not. And uh, when there are intelligent and intelligible uh, storylines to follow, mm. of course, you don't need to do that all the time. Yeah. What was the most difficult thing with writing about a game that was over 15 years old? Finding the interesting aspects of it. I mean, uh, back then, a lot of stuff was very pretty crappy. Wait, so it, uh, back then, did you think back then that this game was good, though? Yeah, it was it, fantastic. But the biggest thing ever happened to us. The biggest thing that ever happened, but in retrospect, not so much. Um, it was important as a meeting place, uh, it was important uh, as a beginning, mm. uh, we, we understood that we were not alone, that was very important, yeah. uh, we realized we were a part of our culture. That's fantastic. Alan, thank you so much for talking to us. Um, Stockholm sends its love to the Oslo party. Bye. No. Bye. Bye. And we're hanging up. <laughs> That was Alan Edson oh. Hansen from Oslo. He writes about Trenne Björ, which was a massive fantasy LARP uh, played in 1994. It was at the time uh, the event that collected most or, or all. I, at the time, the understanding was that it was everybody. Yeah. It was all the Swedish LARPers, at least. All the Swedish LARPers. Mm -hmm. And how many players was that? Thousand. A thousand players. All of the Swedish or LARPers collected in one place. Uh, perhaps it wasn't quite everyone, but it was a game that, that uh, drew players also from the other Nordic mm. countries, and that's why we're one of the seeds uh, for this community and for this book yes. and for this night was... Um, was sown. Yes. We are now going to call Denmark, where Bjarke Pedersen is waiting. He's going to tell us about the newest game to make it into the book, Delirium. Hello. I don't know why I say hello before they pick up. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Denmark. Hello, hello yeah. Denmark. Hi. Are you in the room at the party? Can we hear the party? It's a great party. Everybody is going crazy. Uh, Everybody is going crazy. Are you loving the book? Everybody is loving the book. 
Yeah. yeah, we can hear them loving the book right now. That's fantastic. Bjarke, would you like to tell us a little about delirium? What is delirium? What was delirium? Delirium was a uh, uh, LARP uh, based around relationships in an insane asylum. In an insane asylum? Why would you place a game about relationships in an insane asylum? Because we can. <laughs> That's a pretty good answer for most game designers, because we can. We can do things that most people can't. What were your goals uh, with Delirium? My personal goal was to, to be at a lab which was very crisp in design and in, uh, in, 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 in it was well planned out. And, and in, in that very safe atmosphere to explore and push myself uh, the most I could within that framework and, and uh, have great experiences with great people. Yes. Uh, you now work uh, professionally as a game designer. You work with international art institutions. Uh, can you tell us just a little bit about that? Yes, uh, in Denmark there's uh, several companies working with LAP professionally, working with companies on all levels and also with uh, children and organizations. So these and would be the, these would be games uh, yeah. that are uh, for companies, for internal education, things like that, and also for children for educational purposes. That is true, yes. Yeah, but what you do is a little different, right? With the art institutions. Yes, with the art thing, that's, that's very different. I work together with an American artist called Brody Condon, and and we are doing classic performance art. Uh, just we take love and relabel it as performance art. And of course, use all that backstory uh, and history of the performance scene uh, and put that into the LARP context. The LARP movement isn't really naturally connected to the performance art movement, but there are quite a lot of overlaps. Do you think that the future of LARP contains a lot more connections to the performing art, arts world? Most definitely, especially from the performance scene. They are very, very interested in the mechanics that we use, the performance structures. And they see great potential in the way to make participatory performance. And, and they, a lot of people are very interested and want to go in that direction. So, that's great for us. Yeah. Are there any other ex um, developments in LARP in the future that you can see? Concerning LARP or? Concerning LARP in general. Well, we can always move forward. We can always uh, challenge ourselves to do better pieces and, and, and uh, be better players and organizers. And mm. It's a bright future and I'm very, very happy to be part of it. Bjarke, I asked Jaco this question and he wouldn't give me an answer. So I'm going to ask it uh, you. Does I ask you the same. Does this book document a movement at its peak or does it, does it uh, document a movement that has just been born? I would say just been born with a heavy, heavy, heavy fun foundation for the future. That's going to be amazing. Thank you very much, Bjarke Pedersen in Copenhagen. Give our love to the Copenhagen party. Yeah, love to Denmark. Bye. 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 That's fantastic. Yes. I'm yes. so excited. Yes. I, I can't quite believe that we're having four simultaneous parties and that I we know. were able to call them even yes. when Skype wasn't working. Yes. And that we were able to get the book on time. I've been speaking quite a lot with Estonian um, printing house, with transport companies, Norwegian customs, and yada yada. And I'm so happy the book came. I was following this on Twitter, <laughs> and yesterday when the book was delivered, and it was like, the book is delivered. And I'm like, yes. yes. And then the, then the person who was taking the packages, mm. uh, receiving the packages, uh, Twitter is desperately they were delivered to the sidewalk. I now have to carry hundreds of kilos of books inside yeah. on my own. Luckily, nobody stole them. Yeah. We all got them into the building. Yes. Uh, we, like I was participating, I was following on the internet with great yes. interest as somebody else carried them into the building. So, Anna Westerling, you're the producer of this book. Yes. What does a producer of a book do? Well, the producer kind of have the overall vision about what this is. And when Marcus and Jaco came to me like two years ago now, uh, I have basically had the same vision as um, Marcus had. That was, I wanted to show people that LARP wasn't just, yes, we run into the forest and we beat each other with rubber sword. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that, but there is more. We don't just go walk around going firebolt, firebolt, <laughs> even though that can be totally <laughs> awesome also. also yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> So, 
what I wanted then was size, and I wanted vision. I, I wanted to create a vision mm -hmm. for this to then to be able to sell this to the cultural funds, so we can get money. So that was my <laughs> first thought: get money. So that's what a producer does. Most uh, the producer envisions it yeah. and finds a way to pay for the grandiose yes. vision. Yes, <laughs> I, I think that's a very nice because then at some point we had slightly different idea between Finland and Stockholm because remember this is actually a real Nordic project mm. because we've been Skyping between Finland and, uh, st and mm. Stockholm all the time and so on and it was like no but we need the grandiose thing. And then I'm l I, it's lovely that you went with the big size and the mm. heavy feeling and the very and the beautiful paper. design and the paper. It's 150 gram paper. I'm it's so 150 happy. gram paper. Yes. It, this is why it nearly didn't make it on for Christmas because the paper Paper is so difficult yeah. to print on that the printing house had to like learn new skills. Yeah. It's amazing. But we were yeah. saying this is a Nordic project. The, the book is also paid for in a very Nordic way. Yes. Yes, this is actually the first project ever that all the Nordic organizations have pitched the, into. The Nordic LARP. LARP, or the or Nordic role playing LARP, organization. LARP yeah. role playing organization like Svera, Cuperion, Fantasiförbundet, and, uh, Bifrost and Ropecon. And Ropecon, they exactly. They all, all order books and gave us money in advance before we have printed anything or they've seen anything. They trusted us and we're of course very thankful for that. And they, we actually had sold 300 books before that's the fantastic. Print, so. And also this is paid for in some, to some degree by the community. Yeah. We have done crowdsourcing thanks to the Story Lab, who is somewhere behind me, um, so that you could pay 500 Swedish kroners or 50 euro for mm. a book. And then you get your name here. I think, you know, people look at the book in different ways, and I love the entire book, but one of this first page here where we have all the crowdsourcers, see if I can show it in picture. We have here... Oh, the name of everybody who's participated in who paying crowdsources. And here, all the people that have given us funds. It's fantastic. And we have, for example, we have the Swedish um, culture of the future, who think Fun, this yeah. is the culture of the future. They're actually very good in supporting LAR projects. Yeah. And we have both uh, Nordic Cultural Fund and Nordic Children and Youth Foundation. Yeah. So, yes, there has been lots of people thinking... This is important, and we've received over 30 euros. 30,000 30, euros, euros in support. In support for That's this. fantastic. Uh, crowdsourcing, if you wonder, the difference between just pre ordering a book and crowdsourcing uh, the book is that if you're, if you're participa participating through crowdsourcing, you agree to pay more. Mm. Now, normally, if you buy a book and if you order something, in a good time ahead, like a, uh, like an airline mm. ticket, it's going to be cheaper. But this is a cunning way to make the book more expensive for people who who are so desperate to be in it, like me, yeah. <laughs> that they'll pay. So now you've got for your the name. pleasure. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. But for the rest of you, if you buy it now, mm -hmm. it's 30 euros, or 300 Swedish, or 250 Norwegian, or 250 Danish. So that's awesome. you are very on the message. I love that. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's. Uh, Obviously, a book this beautiful and this heavy would have been totally, like, incomprehensibly expensive mm. without all this support yeah. from, from the funds and from the crowdsources. So we're yeah. super, super yeah. grateful for this. And I, I can sometimes think maybe we should have put the book, made the book more expensive. But then again, our argument was that we have all the community have pitched in so much in time, energy, and just the fact that we can host a party on the 22nd of December and everybody comes. So, you know, yeah. And, and so we were like, yeah, this is a gift in a way. Everybody has participated. So it's and that's how LARP culture works. I think that's the thing that, that people mm. who are from abroad or from outside this community will find most surprising, will mm. be that everybody works for free. Yes, there are some companies now that make commercial LARPs, but those aren't the kinds of games that would make it into a book of this kind. Those aren't the landmark mm. games, and those are the things that create the most mm. um, undying and, and intense mm. memories. Mm. I yes. think, do you I have any last mm, words? I have something more. Uh, yes. The little thing that says here, it's Fia Livia. It's Fia. It was a Swedish magazine between 1993 yeah. and 2005. So, and now this organization slept for some years till it woken up from a sleeping beauty sleep and now has produced this book. 
So, uh, and, and FAIR in some way was, was one of the, um, the beginnings for documenting the LARP community because it yeah. was a magazine that wrote both about games that were about to happen and, mm. and about practical methodology, about also mm. about practical things like how to make costumes yeah. and how to design games uh, and about games that had yeah. already happened. And, and FIA's first editor, in editor-in-chief, Samir Belarbi, is actually here somewhere and I think... And also one of the authors yes. of, of this I book. I think I got a bit touched when, like, there's a you know, <laughs> link. He started this. I have the first protocol mm. when they're sitting, and now we're having this book. 16 years, it's amazing. I've met second yeah. generation LARPers uh, already, people yeah. who have been gaming with uh, in the mid 90s who are now teenagers uh, and making yeah. their own games. This is, I think, a co form of culture yeah. that's here to stay. Yes. I'm going to oh, yeah. let everybody get back to their Ooh, parties. Uh, one, 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 one more thing. Uh, I'm the web shop. The web shop. How do you get <gasps> the book <gasps> now that yes. we've sold it to you so well? How do you buy it? How do you buy yes. it? How do you buy it, How do you Anna? buy it? <laughs> you go into www.fialivia.se. Maybe the text This is people. really difficult. And so it's www.fialivia.se. I'm going to say that once more. It's www.fialivia. Dot se. That's where you can yes. get the book for the very, very yeah. cheap price of 30 euros. Yeah. And for those who wonder, Fia Livia is Quenya, Tolkien's language. Of course! Of, of course, course it is! And it means spirit of LARP. Spirit of LARP. Yes. So we've uh, come full circle back yes. to the fantasy roots with this. That's a perfect yes. way to end the broadcast. And also, I thought, but I'm not going to clear no, it. Everything <laughs> from the bookshop, uh, all the money we make, from the bookshop will go to invest in new book projects. Yes, very so important. Buy it there. So it's, it's practically a charity. Yes. Okay. No. Goodbye. Goodbye, cities, other cities yes. that are also partying. We're going to go back Goodbye. to our party. And no, everybody on the internet, we love you. Thank you for making these yes. games. Thank you for playing these yes. games. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. <sighs> okay. Sorry, I